Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Face Builder, a plugin by Keen Tools for Blender that generates full 3D heads with base textures from seven or so real world photographs. What really caught my eye about the company and plugin is that it also happens to be extremely well implemented as an almost automated pipeline to Reillusion's Character Creator and Headshot 2.0, which you've perhaps seen content for on this channel previously. These programs working together allow us a really time efficient pipeline and be able to generate unique characters fed by real life people and have their face and bodies fully animatable almost immediately. I'm going to share with you my own experiences with the plugin and its accompanying workflow, attempting to share with you any challenges I encountered along the way, and I definitely did. If you're mostly just interested in the Face Builder section, at a minimum, all you'll really need is a Face Builder license or trial and Blender, the latter of course being free. If you're like me and aren't really a Blender user, don't be dismayed as they're pretty much only using Blender as a UI for Face Builder in order for it to do its work. And there's really next to nothing you're going to have to learn in Blender aside from installing the plugin and initializing it. That's very well covered in another video by Keen Tools. So I'll link that down in the description. So we're jumping right in here. Trust me when I say though, it's a very straightforward process. Face Builder itself works on a licensing system if you're like me and you'll only be needing to generate 3D heads sporadically every now and then, then they offer a month to month license for a meager $18 a month. Or if you think you're going to be using it more, you can always save a bit of money up front by purchasing an annual license for about $180 USD. For me, I'm going to be taking their pretty much fully automated pipeline all the way through Character Creator and Headshot 2, which are of course extra expenses if you don't already own them, but are immensely useful in Face Builder's seamless integration with them was a major selling point in it catching my attention. I'll also be briefly hopping into Photoshop and Lightroom, though there are plenty of other alternative packages out there, some free of charge akin to Blender's open source license. All right, so to start off, we need some solid photos of our talent's face. Since we ideally have a neutral expression for each angle, yes, these aren't going to be very flattering photos and your talent is more or less going to look like they're taking mug shots for a prison stay. This photo section might actually end up being one of the more intensive steps as if you don't try and capture solid photos, it's going to potentially make the rest of the process much more difficult. One thing I did wrong a few times was cropping in too close on the face in an effort to capture as much skin detail as possible, but this made the auto detection of the head fail in a few shots, so try and retain the entire head shape with a little bit of breathing room around it. In Keen Tools' own video, they do a great job of explaining the process from beginning to end, but their model was very youthful, no wrinkles or anything, and the photos had pretty much flawless lighting. If it's an overcast day outside, that's a perfect time to take the photos. It allows for uniform light due to the sun being diffused by the clouds, that type of weather is ideal because what we're basically after here is an albedo pass in the world of 3D, which is the texture of an object with just its base colors without any shading, specularity, ambient occlusion, or anything else included in it. In 3D, these often look really weird, like you peeled off someone's face, ew. But when wrapped back around the model and combined with other passes that we'll create in Character Creator later, this allows our models to be lit correctly by the environment we place them in and look natural. I went through this process of the photos a few times, each time getting slightly better prepared photos, but again, none turned out quite as ready to go or as ideal as the Keen Tools video. I also took a slightly more difficult path and chose a model that is older, as I find the wrinkles and supposed imperfections of older actors to exude a lot more character. Here you can see in these sets of photos that while not ultra shadowed, shading is definitely still present. And while that shading is going to get transferred into it in an unideal manner, it will give me the opportunity to show some of the fixes I came to, which might prove to be helpful to you if, like me, you started with similar results. In Blender, we'll click on the little arrow icon here to expand the side panels. And then in the face builder section, we'll create a new head, add the photos, and click a few starting boxes to constrain certain attributes. Even though all of our source photos here are in a neutral pose, it still might be worth checking the variation box in case the talent slightly shifted in between shots. Now we need to identify features within the photos to try and help it progressively model our head. And a huge helper in this is the auto align button. From my understanding, Keen Tools is always training and updating a library of head shapes, allowing their auto detection to get better over time and give higher quality results. And will save us a lot of time and give more consistent results as well. If the auto detection fails, like it did for me, since as mentioned, I had cropped in a bit too close in certain cases, once you identify three or so points on the face, it kind of resolves itself and you're mostly back in action. At this point, I'm going to zoom in and start to try and refine the placement of the points and add more if I find them necessary, particularly if I find that certain parts of the mesh aren't located or flowing correctly. It's pretty much like putting pins into the model and then stretching it from those areas, which is not ironically what the mode is actually called. This process is going to be the same for every photo, so I won't go through all of them, but instead pause on certain points where I needed to make a bit more adjustments than others. 
Since our model is being continually refined along the way, once we go through the photos once, it's worth stepping through them once more from the beginning and make minor changes if necessary. Once we're done, we're going to exit pin mode and we should be presented with our non-textured model. To get the texture going, we'll just scroll down to texture, set a resolution and UV layout. I'm using max face here to try and retain as much of the face texture as possible. And you might also want to check equalize brightness and equalize color that way, if there's any variation in the photo's color or brightness, the plugin will try and even them all out. Click Create Texture, give it a minute, and you'll then have a nicely textured face. If there's a bit of funk in the model, you can always go back and refine the point some more. But if the issues are only around the eyes and minorly around the mouth, we can likely resolve some of those later in the process. All right, so let's get this head model into Character Creator and continue to refine from there. I'll go ahead and open up Character Creator in the background. And then back in Blender, I'm going to flip down the options for Export and then surprise, surprise, click on Character Creator. You'll see that the plugin is now transferring the result directly into Character Creator via its Headshot 2.0 plugin. You can make some adjustments to the mesh here, but in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and after unchecking Keep Neck Shape and Keep Head Size, click on Attach to Body. We don't need to change anything else on the left aside from texture size if you want, but on the right, we'll choose the base gender and type of image mask we wanna use. Since in my case, so much of the model's sweater is in the texture, it might have been smarter for me to choose type 2 and only include the face itself, but using more will give some more opportunity to discuss other options to fix things. At this point, your face model is fully implemented into Character Creator's pipeline, and if your source photos were more evenly lit than mine, you may be close to being done. In my case, however, there's a lot of issues with the texture to still be adjusted, including the off-kilter skin tones that the software is trying to guess at based on the texture, and that's mostly coming from the sweater imagery influencing things. We'll head over to the Headshot version 2 tab and start to refine there. First off, the skin tone is definitely off. The talent skin tone is near a pearlescent white, so we'll make that big change first. And while this isn't going to fix the texture on the head itself, we'll get to that soon. We'll also adjust things like eye color and also masks for certain parts of the face, such as the eyes and nose. And we're definitely in a better spot now than we were. Though, I'm going to hop over and edit a few of the morphs on our character, as her eyeballs are sitting a bit too far back in her head and her neck is too long. From here, I'm mostly going to try and explore different avenues of addressing that head texture, so I'm going to bring this into Photoshop to fix. As you can see, there are some obvious holes in our texture where the photos didn't provide coverage. We'll use the more controllable content-aware fill features in newer versions of Photoshop to quickly fill these in. And then we'll save out the texture and drag it into the box as our new Photo Diffuse texture and click Update Skin Texture at the bottom. That's done quite a bit for us, but the color and shading is still an issue. And while you could probably address all those back in Photoshop or a similar app, I ended up using Nuke because at least from my background, it was easiest for me to think through. But since Nuke isn't a more commonly known app, I'll just run through the general idea in hopes that you can translate it into your own app of choice. So overall, I'm wanting to procedurally isolate the shadows of the texture and then lift up and color correct those areas only. I've done this a few times, grabbing deeper shadows and more general shadows in different passes. I've also made the image a bit more in line with the skin color and then saved it out. This will now, again, become our new iteration of the Photo Diffuse back in Character Creator. From here, I'm going to use some aspects of the SkinGen Premium plugin, though these aren't absolutely required, but do help a lot in trying to introduce back in those finer skin details, of which I'll jump through so you can see the overall idea. And finally, with some effort on our part, we now have a perfectly functional head that can perform and is also set up to where it will properly receive light in any environment we happen to put it in. I hope you found this video to be helpful, and thank you for watching.